Hey guys, this is Annie at AnnieRBG on Twitch. I uh, hope everybody's doing well. Today I'm going to go over flag maps. I won't be going over a specific strategy. What I'll be going over in my talk here is what to look for and how to position yourself on the map for a win. Um, I'm not going to talk about a very specific strategy because the game is always constantly changing. What I'm going to teach you here is what, how to adapt mid-game to give your team the best chance of success. Um, you could be the best strategist in the world until your team were to be at all times. It really is going to come down to your team pressing the buttons better than the other team is what's going to give you the pressure. So I'm going to get right to it. So we've got the Horde and Alliance side. I'm going to be just sharing it from the Horde perspective just because it's a little bit easier. Uh, but it, the same applies for both sides. Uh, the first thing you're going to do is look at the comp. Do they have stealthies? Um... You know, what is their comp looking like? What are they going to hang back? What do you think they're going to send O and D? So, there's three spots where team fights generally happen. Uh, team fights at, at the very, very start. So, they either happen right around here, right around here, or right around here. And the reason for the, these positioning, I'll go over in a second. So, So at the very, very start, there's a couple options of what your team can do. So the very first time uh, you come out, uh, you both teams come out right here, okay, or right here. And the options are that, say, if the Alliance team fully commits with their FC, and they go pick up the flag, okay? So if they fully commit, that means it, that opens the floor for like you to decide what you want to do with your team. You could either fully commit. And your team to go get the uh, the flag, or you could choose to intercept. Okay, so if you decide to intercept, uh, what you want to be focused on is killing their healers, killing their FC, any overextenders, of course. Uh, you could by intercepting, you can potentially get a fast cap by slowing or killing their players. Uh, when you intercept, you need to look at what they are missing from the team fight. Do they actually have? All their players here is the rogue a druid stealth. You know who's you know do they have like a DK or warrior whoever hanging back over here somewhere? You know what do they actually have in this team fight? And as you're running over here to intercept them, you need to be evaluating that. So if they have a rogue and druid stealth or a couple of people hanging back, then you need to figure out what your options are for going to go help in your FC because you intercept here, your FC is going to go pick right. So if they have a rogue and druid back, then you may only need to send a DPS. So you'll send like a rat pally or a DK, a mage, a druid, a rogue, something to go help your FC pick. That way you can commit all three healers over here. That extra DPS is going to help your FC be able to get out pretty free. Okay, And you're still putting a lot of pressure on their FC, and they're not picking for free. Now if they are sitting, let's say three things back then you want to send a healer so say if they got the rogan druid missing and they have someone over here chilling or, or something like that then you 100 percent want to send a healer or if you're team fighting right here and you see a dps leave to go help that rogan druid then you want to send your healer the reason is if you have an fc and then you have three people back Okay, that only leaves three DPS, so you don't need three healers to heal three DPS right here, right? If you intercept. So you want to send a healer to your FC, and you still have the other DPS helping your FC, and your FC should, should be fine. Alrighty. Um, you don't want to always get caught up in sending Warrior, or the Holy Pally always has to go to the FC, or this person always has to go to the FC, or every single time. We're going to we're gonna commit this every single time. The H Pally, you stay with the FC the entire time. The reason you don't is because you need to be, that's like really narrow-minded thinking. You want to be looking at the broader picture. You need to see, okay, if they're not sit, sitting anything back and they did commit everything team fight, why would you need to send that H Pally or that Rat or Warrior or whoever's escorting your FC? You know, Put them over here. Put your resources where they're actually needed. If they're not setting anything back, the rogue and druid are committed to the fight and whoever else, um, you don't need to send somebody with your FC. 
So that's just something you always want to be clicking through. And as soon as people start save your fighting over here and they have DPS start to leave to go get your FC, same thing. If they, if it's only one or two, send a DPS to go help them. If it's more than that, send a healer. Alrighty. Um, you need to constantly be looking at where the enemies are to allocate you know resources to your FC and team fight. It, because you don't want your FC to die, and you don't want your team fight to fall behind. Alrighty. So. If your team, if the other team intercepts your FC and forces a team fight on you. So, say if the Alliance team comes out here, and they bolt over here, and they intercept you right here, okay? So, you're running up here, and they, and you have a big old fight right here. What you need to do is you need to have enough resources to get your flag to the to the cap, grab the flag and get it back, right? So their FC is most likely going to be running over here and getting that flag. You don't want them to be able to do this for free, okay? If they put eight or nine players on top of your FC and your team fight, and you have to you have to fight from here all and spread your norm numbers thin because you you all know people don't stack really well. So you have to spread your numbers thin and come all the way here, pick the flag, and they're still on you. And they're, you're coming back down. They're still on you, still on you, still on you. And you have to come all the way back to your base, right? And they're on you the entire time. You just can't really do that. You'll run out of cooldowns eventually. You run out of man, you'll lose. So what you have to do is, if they intercept you, you need to put pressure on this FC, that this FC that came over here for free, okay? So you need to see your rogue, your druid, your whoever is going to come over here, you know, intercept them in the flag room, intercept them over here, wherever, and he's going to put pressure on that FC. What that's going to do is it's going to make them peel off a, a healer or it's going to make them peel off a DPS to go help their FC or more, okay? So say you have a, your rogue Boomy go hit them right here and they just now realize that from the team fight and they go oh shit we need to go help our dh what you need to do now is and is have a dps and healer or a couple dps slow their healer slow their dps that are trying to go help their fc their fc is in a lot of shit right now okay they, he needs someone right now. He's got a Rogan Druid on him, and maybe even like a third DPS if you peel it off a third DPS. You send your DPS and maybe a healer, depending on how much they peel off. Or again, if you're a healer, you need to be matching numbers. If they have three DPS move this way, you know, or, or that way, you need to say, okay, do I need three healers at this fight? Healing two or three DPS? If you're not stressed as a healer, you probably could be used somewhere else. Like Healing should be stressful the entire match. That's just the way it is. So, you're having your DPS and your healer slow these guys from getting your FC. You potentially get a kill. If you don't get a kill, what you do get is a lot of cooldowns out of your FC. When they connect to your healer, you have extra DPS. And you're probably going to get a lot of cooldowns from that healer too. So, now you're ahead on cooldowns. You're, uh, and you have a really good position. Because now, that team fight has merged from being over here to now being over here. So, if you're fighting in mid like that, so now say the team fight is merged to being over here, or say if the clash is intercepted right here, um, if that FC is running away from you, right, and he runs this way, then you want to use your team fight to slow down these healers. You take your fast DPS, you catch up to this FC, and you put a lot of damage into him. He's going to have to come back, uh, or he's going to die. Okay, so you just want to keep pressure on that FC. Um, you just don't want them to be able to pressure your FC for free ever. All right, let me read through my notes real fast. Say, say if you just do a full team fight, all you know, nine v nine, both healers and DPS go pick up. As soon as this person picks up. You generally want to. You generally send people down to go put pressure on him. If you didn't already have people sit back, and use the rest of your team to slow. Okay, they're gonna be doing. They're gonna be trying doing the same thing. the The thing is, you don't want to get caught up in being too much on defense. I'll go over that in just a little bit. Um, if your team dies mid, when you pick up the flag, then your FC needs to stay as safe as possible. 
So say your team dies, your FC picks up, he's, he's over here, he's like, oh shit, what do I do? He's scared. Wait, and you're rezzing right here, right? What you need to do, this guy, and they, 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 this team right here, the alliance team, is going to have to run all the way back to get to your FC. So your, your FC needs to like run over here, needs to decide if he's, if he's going graveyard, if he's going tunnel, wherever the enemy is not going to be. You're going to res, and you need to hook up with your FC. Your FC doesn't necessarily have to run out. If he runs out, he's going to connect to them really fast, right? So he needs to stay up here as long as possible for you guys to res to get across the field. And as soon as they're about to connect, that's when he commits and goes to one of the paths that's, that he sees as the safest. Okay? Or that your team sees as the safest. Your team could be like, hey, they have a lot going ramp. You might want to go graveyard or go tunnel. That's just something you have to be aware of. You get with your FC. <clears throat> their team is going to have everybody on your FC now. Okay? You're going to have nine or eight players on top of your FC. You're fighting... You know, right here, say you went ramp, you're fighting right here, it's a big clusterfuck. Okay, you have to get your guy into a safe spot. So as soon as your FC, if you fight right here, as soon as your FC gets on the other side of the team fight, and even if they're still on him, still connecting, it's a little scary. As soon as your team's with him, you need to send a no immediately. You don't want to send everyone on defense. You don't need to... Because what happens is you're going to be kiting all the way back to your base, right? Or all the way to the graveyard or wherever you want to kite to. And they're going to sit, him, sit on him the entire time. Eventually, you're going to run out of cooldowns and lose. Especially if they're pushing two or three healers. So what you do is you send your rogue, druid, maybe a third DPS. And you put press on their FC. That's going to cause them to peel off just like they were in that mid fight. That's going to, and if they don't, their FC is going to is going to die. Um, so, so those are generally what happens in the openers for most flag maps. So let's just say if everyone's rezzed up and both teams got to their flag uh, or got to their base with the flag and you send a no and they send a no. Okay, so you send a no, they send a no. Eric, so it's pretty equal, right? At that point, it's a race. It's a race to see who's going to get the flag first. Okay, you almost always have to send a healer on offense. If they are sitting DPS back, you almost always have to send a healer. If they only set one DPS back and it's high stacks, you don't have to send a healer. But that's only if it's high stacks and only if they're sitting one DPS. If they're sitting two or three DPS back, even if it's medium to high stacks, the majority of the time, when you're still going to need to send a healer. Um, let's see. I, I took some notes. Just give me one second. Okay. So say you sent O, that you, both teams send an O. Say if your team wipes early. So your offense wipes early. They need to res and connect with your D team. And what what constitute high stacks? Uh, we'll go. I'll go over all the questions at the end of this, and then we'll talk about the stacks. So if your team wipes early, they need to res and connect with your D team. So if your D team's cutting around, they need to figure out where they're at and where the other team is. And you need to wipe that team as soon as possible. If the other team, when they wiped you, sent their extra healer, you need to send 2-3 to three DPS on O still. But your extra healer and your extra um, DPS need to come back on D. So if it takes you a long time to wipe them on D and you get stuck on D, then you're going to lose. So that's why you want to make sure you can send a couple DPS if you can afford it. So, But the reason you don't want to push O again is because that team that pushed O at the same time as you have now been on your fly carrier the entire time that you pushed on your first O, the time it takes you to get back to the FC, and however long you're going to be on that FC. So like the odds of them getting a kill is a lot higher than you. So you, if you are going to commit back on D, you need to make sure that you do have a strong chance to wipe them. Check to see what they have on D. If they still have two healers on D and two DPS... Then yeah, full commit D real quick, wipe them, and then make the push. If they only have one healer back and they push everybody else, send two, send two DPS, send Rogue Boomy. That's all you need. Okay. Um, 
once you wipe them, now you have a couple options. Okay, so you wipe them, they're in their graveyard, you're running out here, okay? So they, they just rezzed up, and you're already midfield. You're already mounted up and, you know, ready to go. Both, um, both teams are technically on their side of the map. The difference is that they're rezzing and you're running across the map. At this point, you take one of your extra D healers and one of your extra D DPS, and you send with this team midfield, okay? So you what they do is now, if they go on D, because you already have a head start, then your extra healer and your extra DPS can commit with you, and y'all can try to get a kill, right? Because he's gonna be at higher stacks now. So, if they decide to send most of them, and then send like Rogue and Boomy on O, what you can do is you can send your extra DPS or your extra healer back on D. Or if they decide to send everybody back, then you could say you send your extra healing DPS back on D immediately. They'll beat them to it. You because you're you're already mounted up. You already have you know, a ten second advantage like here from here to here, and you're like in midfield. You haven't committed yet. So, and you have a lock gate right here. And or your other option is that you send you take your extra DPS that you sent and you use that and the extra healer and you intercept them over here. Slow them as much as possible. Your regular O push makes the O push, and it's going to take this team a lot longer to connect. What you what you then do is say if that person got the rogue and drew it out of stealth, okay, your extra DPS from here can now like scoot down and slow them more, and now you have a lot of time between them connecting to you and how fast you're going to be connecting onto their FC, okay? So it just helps your race a lot more. Um, let me look through this real quick. Yeah, I feel like you're watching football. If your team is not comfortable sending two healers O, or you know you're not really good at matching numbers or watching that, what you can do is instead is make your after you wipe them, you put your O team midfield right here. Don't and so they res, so they're either gonna go on D or they're gonna go on O, right? So what they do is if they go on D, just wait, okay? If they go on O, commit. You're gonna you're already gonna be like 20 seconds ahead of them, or you know, between 10 to 30 seconds ahead of them connecting because you're already mounted up. You're already on their side of the field. If they go on D, just wait, okay? Make sure you have people with your FC just in case they send Rogue Boomy. Just wait it out. The stacks are gonna get higher. If they get if they get to a certain like really high, then you just push in, get a kill. Okay. Eventually they're gonna have to push back out and push on O, and that's just gonna be worse for them if they wait it out. If you're fighting mid and if you're fighting mid and they're on your FC and you're really scared for them, just like as before, you wouldn't find an opportunity to send an O push because that's every time you can send an O push, that's going to allow you to put pressure off your FC because they're going to pull back. So if they have you know only one DPS guard in their FC or one healer guard in their FC and the rest of their team is on you, like you need to send two people and you need to put pressure. If you don't put that pressure, you're going to be back be on the back foot the entire time and you're eventually going to fall on D. So, I went over like most of the major points of you know when to push and when to hold back and rotating and and how to you know measure where you need to be as a DPS and healer. Um, I'm gonna look at chat real quick and see if there's any questions. Uh, someone asked what constitutes as high stacks. So, high stacks it it you know it's kind of different for everyone, right? So, say ten stacks for example is you know hundred percent more damage and fifty percent less healing. You know, that's huge. Like, two people can take that guy down, like, really, really easily. Um, so, like, 10 sacks is extremely high right now. That's, like, very high. Like, if it gets to 10 sacks, then and neither team can get a kill, and something's going wrong. So, 5 sacks is actually getting pretty high right now, because you get 25% healing deduction on top of the uh, 5 sacks of damage, so 50% more damage. That's actually pretty big. Uh so I would say five stacks and higher, 
your FC when people get on him is going to, you know, you're you're going to have to go through some big cooldowns. You're going to be stressing. So that's what I would constitute as high stacks, five stacks or higher probably. That was my worst on Gulch and Twin Peaks guide of how to move around on FC maps. Like I said, this wasn't supposed to be a strategy guide, but an overall how to read the map, how to position yourself on the map, where to go and be for offense and defense, and trying to build map awareness because that's what's going to allow you to match numbers better and allow you to take advantage of your enemy. So I hope this helps somebody. Um, if you have any comments or questions or if you want to see different kind of content, please drop a comment below and I will try to reply to all my comments. If you want to catch me live, you can catch me at AnnieRBGs on Twitch. And thanks for watching, guys. Hope you get some CR.